Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a quick and dirty big head effect without needing to do any complicated masking or rotoscoping or green screening. So this is only going to work on certain type of clips where the background is suitable and the, the fork and the person and the head movement is suitable, but it still should work on a good variety of example clips. So the first thing we're going to do is start with our original clip. And there's some movement in this. The camera is moving a little and the head movement is slightly moving, not too much craziness. And what I'm going to do is just duplicate the original layer on top of itself. So I can do that by holding option, clicking and dragging it on top of itself. Now in the effects control panel, we can go to the opacity section and we can create a new mask. So you can use the pen tool if you want to really get in there and create a custom shape, or you can use the circle tool. I'll use the pen tool in this case just because. And I'm going to create a mask that kind of just goes around the neckline and then around the shape of his head. So this is as tedious as it will get is just this, this step right here. But I don't even have to make it perfect to the point where it's literally following the exact edge. It's just kind of a rough outline. Now on this mask, if you go to the mask path section, you'll see as the camera moves, the mask falls out of place. So what we're going to do to fix that is use this tracking feature. If I just press the play button, it'll track this mask forward frame by frame. And this will work best if, again, there's not crazy head movement whipping around or things moving in front of the frame. So this is what it looks like after Premiere has tracked your mask. It's tried to follow. It's created a keyframe for literally every single frame and it's tried to follow the head movement. If I turn off the visibility of the layer underneath, we can see we now have this kind of floating head happening and I like the mask. It, it's pretty much done a great job. If it didn't do a great job, then you might want to delete some of those portions or go in there and try to move the mask and, and kind of do those keyframes by hand if you need to. Uh, the other things that we have in this menu, which is gonna are gonna help us is the mask feather and the mask expansion. So we can see this rough choppy edge that we've created. I want to just feather that out so it's a lot more soft like that. And if I need to, I can expand out or in a little bit just to shrink it as I need. This is going to be good because, you know, the seat and everything behind him, it creates lines that are not going to match up when we scale it in and we want to have as little of those problems as possible. So now I've got the floating head and I've got the original layer underneath and I can simply just increase the scale of this video and it'll make his head bigger. So let's just do like, I don't know, 150. No, that's way too big. Let's do like 130. Make it 30 points bigger. Now, since the anchor point of this layer is in the middle, it kind of scales out that way. So you are going to have to add a few keyframes onto the position. So let's go to the first frame, for example. Let's put the the neckline kind of where it should be. And then I'm going to move forward a bit. If we, if we can just leave it like this the whole time, that's fine. But you also might want to add a few keyframes. So if I go to the position, change, let's say like right here, I think it should go back down a little bit again or go to the left a little bit again. I can do that and it might be suitable enough for me to add like maybe three or four keyframes for this clip just on the position. Again, I think maybe the feathering I've done is a bit too much and maybe I can expand it back out a little bit just to fix some things. But when I play this back, I've created a pretty quick and dirty big head effect that, you know, for short portions or for a quick viewing doesn't look that crazy bad. And it's not like this effect will only work on, you know, just because this clip is good. Here's another example where I've done the same exact thing and it doesn't look like the worst thing in the world either. So this is a quick and dirty method. If you do want some After Effects ideas for this, I've made other videos with similar ideas, but in After Effects and I'll probably still make more in the future. So you can subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all of my new videos. My name is Justin Odisho. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.